So in this talk, I'm going to introduce a recent work on cost aware performance optimization for mixed precision training. Uh, this work is a collaborative work between uh, Hunan University, um, UC Merced, and Xilian. So you, you probably heard about uh, uh, using lower precision training uh, in somewhere, right? And uh, obviously, there's a lot of benefit by doing so. Uh, instead of using full precision training like FP32, you use FP16 um, uh, in some operators and in some tensors. Uh, there's a lot of benefit in doing so. For example, you can lower uh, arithmetic complexity. That basically means you can potentially reduce training time. You can also uh, uh, save uh, GPU memory consu uh, uh, consumption. Uh, that allows you to train larger models using larger batch size. Um, and even save memory bandwidth. So that's good. But using lower precision training, uh, you, you have to be careful. Uh, because uh, using lower precision training, potentially you could cause numerical overflow or underflow. And uh, if you don't use it carefully, you may lose training accuracy and, and, and convergence. So in practice, actually people are using a mixture of uh, FP16 and FP, FP32. So that's the reality. That's what the current machine learning tra uh, training framework like uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch are doing. Basically, using mixed uh, precision training, you are using um, full precision training, full precision uh, to handle some numerically dangerous uh, computations. And now let's take a moment to look at uh, how the uh, machine learning frameworks uh, is uh, doing this uh, mixed precision training. Uh, in a machine learning framework like TensorFlow or PyTorch, actually they categorize uh, operators based on their numerical safety level. And uh, in this slide, I'm going to present how TensorFlow is doing this uh, categorization. Actually, the uh, PyTorch is doing a similar thing. In TensorFlow, we have four levels. We have four numerical safety levels. The first level is called allow list. And in this list, we have some operators. And if you run those operators in LP16, you don't lose accuracy. You don't lose uh, convergence. And those operators tend to be performance critical. And uh, as a result, TensorFlow always use FP16. And uh, there are a couple of examples, uh, such as multiple, uh, matrix multiplication and uh, convolution 2D. The second category, category is called the deny list. So what does this mean? This basically means this is numerical dangerous. And if you use FP16 to run those operators, it's highly possible that you will lose accuracy. Um, and even worse, the effect of those operators can propagate to the downstream operators. Your, 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 the accuracy, the uh, loss can be observed in downstream operators. Um, as a result, uh, the TensorFlow always use uh, FP32 for those operators. And uh, we have a couple of examples, such as uh, exponential and softmax. The third category is called the infer list. So what does this mean? This basically means, uh, in this list, uh, we have some operators. It is numerical safe, numerically safe. That basically means you don't lose accuracy if you use uh, FP16. But you have to, still you have to be careful. You need to check if there's any upstream operators coming from deny list. If that's the case, then those accuracy loss can propagate to those operators, and then you have accuracy loss. So example of this um, uh, category include the bears add. And then last but not least, we have a clear list. Okay, clear list uh, basically means um, uh, those operators do not have uh, numerically significant Im impacts on your uh, training accuracy. And uh, you can either, you, you are free to choose FP16 or FP32, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, examples include the max and the mean operators. Okay, so we have these uh, four categories. And now, uh, if you give me uh, uh, training uh, models, and we can get the uh, data flow, uh, we can get the computation graph, and then I'm going to use the four categories to decide 
For each operator, what kind of uh, precision you are going to use, either FP32 or FP16? And then you are going to rewrite this computation graph or data flow graph. And uh, if between any two operators, uh, we have different precision, then you are going to insert a cast operation node to trigger this conversion between different precisions. Now, if we look at this whole workflow, we may immediately find a problem. This workflow, they pay attention to the um, accuracy convergence, they pay attention to the uh, performance, but they never pay enough attention to the casting cost. What about the casting cost? It seems that it's just a implicit assumption that the casting cost is always smaller than performance benefit. Then we ask ourselves, is, it, is, it, is that true or not? To answer this question, uh, we did the extensive test uh, profiling, and we're trying to characterize those uh, operators in the uh, machine learning framework. And we're trying to study the impact of tensor precision, uh, tensor cores, or TC, uh, casting cost, and the input data size on operating prof operation performance. And uh, in our paper, we have a long list of those profiling results. Uh, please uh, feel free to go into the paper and look at them. But in this talk, I'm going to um, focus on a couple of operators and uh, highlight the major insight we get uh, in order to enable efficient mixed precision training. Now let's look at the result a little bit. In this slide, uh, we are going to focus on an uh, operation called the uh, convolution 2D backprop input. And in this table, you see the input data size, you see the low precision action time, uh, action, uh, low precision plus casting time, full precision time, and whether we are using TC or not. So this is, this is a very simple table. And look at this table, we can immediately draw two observations or two conclusions. The first conclusion is we see that without using TC, using low precision actually leads to slightly better performance than using full precision. And using TC, you can actually significantly magnify the performance benefit. This, this conclusion is drawn from the first two cases. Let's look at these two cases. Uh, in the second row, we see that we are not able to use tensor core because the input size is not aligned with the uh, uh, input requirement of the tensor core. And the, we, we, we use a full, uh, low precision. We get some performance benefit, very little benefit, maybe less than 1% or 5%, very little benefit. But if I change the uh, input data size, so we are uh, able to use in TC, we are able to meet the tendership requirement in TC, and then we immediately find the big difference between FP16 and FP32. And there are about a 50 percentage of performance improvement. So that's very good. And based on this result, we also be able to make another observation. The performance gain of using low precision actually varies a lot across input data sets. Okay. In this example, it's not only about whether using TC or not give you such large performance difference. It's also about whether you are able to effectively or efficiently use the casting, the, the, the precision casting. Because look at the, uh, how the casting is implemented. It's about uh, how often you use bit casting, how often you use truncation, how large is your output. And all of this are related to the input data size. Okay, so the performance gain at last will vary a lot across the input data size. And in this slide, in this next slide, I'm going to give you another operator, another input operator. It still is um, related to convolution 2D. In this case, we use two input data sets. And uh, we see that if you, just, if you just focus on low precision itself, we have performance improvement. You see the difference between low precision and full precision. And we have performance improvement, right? But if you consider the casting cost, all the performance improvement, all the performance benefits are going away. And uh, this conclusion is generally true, no matter whether you are using TC or not, or tensor core or not. So basically, the takeaway message is the casting operation introduces non-negligible uh, overhead. 
So the considering casting cost, sometimes you just cannot get Poisson benefit. And the traditional assumption that the casting cost is always justifiable and we should always use low precision if possible is not true. Based on the above observation, we introduce our solution. Our solution is a tool is a, uh, uh, called uh, Campbell. Campbell is a cost-aware performance optimization tool for mixed precision training. Uh, uh, we, our tool can preserve the training accuracy. And this tool includes two components. The first component is the offline component. Uh, the most important thing of the offline components have to come from this performance modeling. So using this performance modeling, we are able to predict the performance of a low precision and what the performance uh, 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 will be and what the casting cost will be. And this performance modeling is based on a set of uh, uh, carefully selected uh, hardware control events. And then the other part of components is online components. This is a runtime system. We, uh, we, we change the TensorFlow runtime system. And this system basically you are collecting the full precision performance and, you, you, and then using offline components or the performance modeling to decide what the performance will look like. And then we, we, we dynamically rewrite the graph, a uh, data flow graph, to, to, to generate the, uh, uh, the precision conversion between operators. OK. And now I'm going to jump into the design details. I will start with the performance modeling. So the general idea of the performance modeling is summarized as follows. The first is the modeling is used to predict the casting cost and operator performance in low precision. And uh, the modeling itself is based on regression-based model. So you give me the full precision performance, and then I, I predict the low, performance, uh, low precision performance. And then this modeling is operation-specific. That basically means different operator has different, has different performance models. We are not going to use a general performance model to predict the performance of all operators. In this way, we are, going to, we are able to input a, a predicting accuracy a lot. You will see. And the first, we'll see the uh, predicting the casting cost. OK. So think about this uh, performance prediction for casting cost. As we just mentioned, the casting cost has to be related to the input data size, right? Or in other words, the tensor size. So this is our performance model to predict casting cost. It's related to tensor size, and then we have a consideration of the casting operator initialization time, which is constant, and also we have the coefficient r. And we use the linear regression to get this coefficient. And you can, as you can see, this model is input aware and can be generally applied to the, the casting to the to the casting of both uh, uh, high precision to low precision and low precision to high precision. And then we have this um, uh, performance model to predict the low precision performance. As I just mentioned before, this performance model is taking the full precision performance as input and then predict the low performance, uh, low precision performance. And this model use a set of hardware control events as input. And we have some coefficients, like uh, in this case, uh, wi and, uh, uh, and omega. And those coefficients are collected through the regression. And uh, one critical thing about this model is this, this model is operation specific. And because the, let's think about this problem. If the model is coupled to a specific operation, the information come from the operation type itself will give you a lot of information about the memory access intensity, arithmetic intensity, and so on. By considering the operation type, we can significantly reduce the complexity of the modeling. For example, if I tell you that this operator is matched with multiplication, you can quickly, you can immediately get a sense that the memory size pattern in the operator is going to be threaded. As a result, in your performance model, you don't need to model this threaded memory size anymore. So in this way, we are not only simplifying the performance model, but also improve the accuracy a lot. And also, if you look at those uh, operators, 
in uh, in the, those operators in the machine learning framework, you don't have too many operators. And you can build this performance model for each of them. And also, you can uh, repeatedly use the models that actually amortize your uh, 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 model construction cost. And also, as you can see, in the model, we have this uh, uh, hardware counter events. And these hardware counter events are selected based on the Spearman's rank correlation analysis. And those events are not, um, you know, are not universal. I, for different models, for different operators, we give, you use different uh, um, hardware counter events. OK, so this is the general idea about the performance modeling. OK, now, now let's see what's next. We have a performance model. What should we do at the runtime? So at the runtime, we want to decide the data precision for each operation. And then we want to decide which operations to be converted together to reduce the number of casting costs. OK, you need to minimize the casting cost. And uh, in general, we want to minimize training time. We want to minimize the casting cost and don't impact on the numerical safety compared with the traditional mixed precision training. So you want to respect the numerical safety decision made by the traditional uh, uh, machine learning framework. So at the runtime, we first use one iteration to collect the, uh, 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 the tensor shape or tensor size and the uh, action time of those tensors. And then we are going to rewrite the data flow graph using four passes. In the first pass, I'm going to examine every node in my data flow graph and see whether this node is in the allow list. And remember, the, the node in the allow list is treated as numerical safe. So we, we will use performance model to decide, to decide if the benefit is going to be larger than the casting cost or not. It's the first traverse. And then in the second traverse, I'm going to check those numerically unsafe nodes. Basically, those nodes are in the deny list. I'm not going to try doing the casting for those uh, um, nodes or operators. And then in the third traverse, I'm going to examine the remaining nodes, remaining operators in a data, a data flow graph, and see if they are in the infer list or clear list. And based on the result from second traverse, we can also decide that the node in the infer list is numerical, numerically safe or not. And then in the last traverse, I'm going to check those numerically safe nodes identified in the last traverse. And then we use a performance model to decide whether benefit is larger than the casting cost or not. If yes, I'm going to insert the cost nodes. So that's all, that's all the whole picture. And then I'm going to present our evaluation results. We evaluate our system on a, a, a machine with uh, Intel Xeon CPU, and we evaluate two types of GPU. One is with uh, NVIDIA RTX 2080, the other is uh, V100. And we use uh, uh, six <coughs> machine learning models, six common machine learning models, and uh, uh, three data sets. And we have two baselines for evaluation. The first baseline is the um, uh, state of art mixed precision uh, method in TensorFlow called the TF underscore AMP. And the second uh, baseline is the full precision training, FPC32. Uh, we first look at the training throughput. And uh, so in this figure, we have uh, the y-axis is the training throughput. So higher is better, higher is better. So look at these curves, uh, look at these bars. And uh, our system, Campbell, inputs throughput by 20 percentage on average and up to 23, compared with the traditional TensorFlow. And uh, in this slide, I'm presenting this number of cast operation nodes. Ideally, we want to reduce the number of cast nodes, right? Because sometimes it's not performance beneficial to use a lower precision training. And the y-axis in this figure is the number of casting nodes. So we can see that the Campbell reduced the casting operating node by 27 percentage on average compared with the uh, um, TensorFlow. <laughs> and in this figure is about uh, uh, tensor core utilization, tensor core utilization. And uh, again, we compare with the TensorFlow. And uh, you can see that uh, the y-axis is tensor utilization, so higher is better. You can see that the Campbell actually 
increased utilization of tensor core by 29 percentage on average and up to 37 percentage. So the reason why our system can improve tensor utilization in this way is because once the performance model predicts that the benefit, the performance benefit is larger than the casting cost, then our system will try best to utilize the tensor core, even though the input to the operator is not aligned with the, the in shape requirement of tensor core. So that gives us a, a, a higher utilization of a tensor core. And the last slide, this is, this is my last slide. I'm going to compare the training accuracy um, between uh, full precision, uh, Campbell, and the TensorFlow. So you can see that the, we actually don't lose the training accuracy. This is because we fully respect the numerical safety decided by the, the machine learning framework. OK, so in general, in this work, I'm, going to, I'm trying to tell you a story that the casting cost is not ignorable. When you do the uh, mixed precision training, you, you, you got to take it into consideration. And uh, in this work, we contribute novel performance modeling and graph rewriting techniques to enable this um, uh, more efficient mixed precision training. And in general, we bring the 20 percentage performance improvement up to 23 percentage improvement. That's it for this talk. Thank you. <laughs>